Good morning, everyone. This is probably, what, the fourth time I'm trying to get this right, uh, upgrading the Endless Torch. Uh, the last time I made this video, I didn't get them to work correctly. Well, I finally did get them after that last video to work. And the two little MOSFETs that I have here for the switching, yeah, they lasted about 30 seconds once I finally got it to work correctly, and then they fried. So they could not handle the amperage going through it. So... I've had these sitting for a little while, but I've been busy around the house. And as you can see, the footprints for these MOSFETs are significantly bigger. So, that's the only change to the board, basically. So, I already have the LED soldered on each one on the back. And we're going to go ahead and solder paste them. And I'm going to do the manual pick in place with a little bit of a change this time. And I actually put my little mat right in there, and I have all my components laid out already. So this should make assembly a heck of a lot faster. So let's start pasting. And as you can see, I opted to go for a metal stencil this time. Get the cat hair off of it. Jeez. So hopefully this will give a better result with my pasting. That already looks a lot better than the uh, other ones I use. Let's see here. Oh yes, that is a much better paste job than what I normally get with the regular plastic ones. So let's get this one out of here. Did not see that happening. There we go. And even with that happening, this result is 10 times better than what I would get using the plastic stencils. So, yeah, that is really good. Now, you can see I have all three boards mounted on this piece of cardboard with cutouts for the LED so they sit flush. And I have two strips of double-sided tape just tacky enough to hold it so the boards don't move around while I do the placement. The top board we're going to be using new ICs on. Um, the other two will be recycled ICs. Okay, let's reflow. Okay, here they are fresh out of the reflow oven and using the stainless steel stencil, oh my God, so much better, especially with the back of the USB-C port right here. With You can only see one row of pins right there. When I use the plastic stencil, I always got too much paste and I always had solder bridges back there. None whatsoever. Now, if we keep looking around here, the MOSFETs came out perfect. The little 8-pin right here on the bottom, if it focuses up correctly, that came out perfect. No solder bridges. And the charging chip, even that, no solder bridges whatsoever. 
So it definitely goes to show if you spend just an extra two bucks, two or three dollars to get the um, stainless steel stencil instead of the plastic one, oh, so much better results. Okay, so for testing today, I have this new unit that I'm going to be playing with, uh, AVHZY CT2. It's basically like, yeah, USB power checker on massive steroids. I haven't done a review on it yet, but I'm going to use that. Um, for power delivery, I'm going to be using this Nectech 90 watt Type C adapter. Now, this of course could be powered directly by the adapter alone, but it also has the option to be powered separately so this way it doesn't measure its own current. So let's see here. With everything in Type C in, Type C out, USB A in, USB A out, the PC. That one will power it on. So I'm going to use micro USB for that. Cancel out of that. And you can see, yeah, I played with it before. I think you hold down and it'll clear everything. Yeah, clear this group. Okay, there we go. Now we are down to nothing. So, now we need input power. If I get my cable management here. Now, USB-C input is down here on the bottom. And I think it goes to the screensaver. So now we can see we got 5.28 volts coming in. So now let's get a cable to go USB-C out. And here's my USB-C out. Always goes to the screensaver when it's not having any power to it. I wish it wouldn't do that, and I don't know if there's a setting on it because I really haven't played with this that much yet. So there we go. There's that. Let's grab the new board that's using all new components instead of reuse stuff. And let's put this on here like so. And let me get the multimeter up here because this super cap should be fairly discharged. It's been sitting probably for at least a month. I don't know what... The the current voltage is on it. Okay, positive, negative. Yeah. 192 millivolts. I will call that discharged. So, let's get ready to plug this in. Let's wake this up and let's see if we fry anything. Okay, we're pulling a half an amp. MOSFETs are not getting hot yet. Let's see what the voltage is doing here. So let's go switch hands. We are charging. So let's let the voltage come up some. See what's doing here. And let's just watch it because we can see the amperage is slowly coming up as it gets higher on the capacity on that. Inductor's hot, but I, I expected that. That's not a big deal. The MOSFETs, on the other hand, are getting a little warm, but they're not bad yet. We're only at a half an amp so far. Yep, and the LED is on below it, so yeah, the boost converter works perfectly fine on here. We should, probably should be already at like one... One volt. Yep, we're just at one volt now. Let's see if I can get the temperature of certain things here. Now my, unfortunately my thing's getting old. Pointing it directly at something doesn't show anything. You gotta go up a little bit. And it's showing right now that the uh, inductor is running about 130 degrees right now. Let's see if I can try to pick up the MOSFETs. I think it's saying the MOSFETs are only about 100 to 102 degrees right now, so... They feel warmer than that. Yeah, there's a little bit of a hot spot on them. Yep, we're almost up to a full amp. We're already at 1.4 volts. 
It's already faster than the original setup that I had before I started this whole journey in blowing up MOSFETs left and right. Mm, the MOSFETs are hot, but I can hold on to them for a little bit, which means they're probably about 130 degrees. They're nowhere near the junction temperature, probably like 250 is what they're rated for. So we probably will not blow them on this test. Now, I think my original charge time on the old circuit was... Yeah, on these ones right here. <clears throat> these ones was about 11 minutes for them to charge. So, it looks like we're already going to beat that a little bit. But we might be able to tweak this a little bit more. I'm not sure. Because we're not really overheating per se. And we're up to 1 and a quarter, volt, one and a quarter amps. 2.3. And the best part is this is a completely hardware setup. I don't have to plug in a JTAG or anything special to program the charging chip for what current. It's all set by resistors. And there we go. Okay, it's dropping down real quick right there. Ever so slight overcharge, not a big deal. That's not going to hurt the capacitor. Wow, it ramped down really quick. That was nice. Down to a quarter amp, and it's just maintaining. It's topping off basically right now. So, we're talking about a 20 millivolt bias. Big freaking deal. That is nice. It's my little, and my little green OED is working. So, yep, the supervisory circuit works as well. And they're already cooling off. No big deal. Okay, so I replaced R5, you can see a little bit of a budgering right there, with a different value resistor, which should kick up the charging amperage a little bit. So let's refocus on the little screen here. Lock that. And wake this up. Let's clear the information out of here. Clear. Okay, good. So, and before we plug it in, we are starting with... 300 millivolts this time so we should see uh, a bit faster charge rate and maybe a little less than nine minutes at least that's what i'm hoping for wake up so plug this one in here we go and it looks like we're already kicking up just a little bit more than what we did last time and we are well underway charging so let's let this run for a little bit, see if the MOSFETs get a little warmer with this charging rate, see if it goes a little faster. Yeah, that is definitely a little warmer this time. At least the inductor is. Ow, yeah. Okay, <laughs> they're a little warmer this time. I think we're up to 152 degrees Fahrenheit. We're definitely peaking out a little bit more. We stopped at like 1.3 amps before. So we are getting a little more amperage. And we're definitely getting it a little earlier now. Yeah, we're almost at 2 volts. But we're definitely not going over the USB spec yet. We haven't hit 2 amps. Which is really good. This power supply is doing really good. We're still over 5 volts. We're not getting really that much voltage sag. As the amperage goes up, we're up to one and three quarters amps now. 1.86, and we're almost done charging here. I think this is going to be the right value because we, I really don't want it to go over two amps. Even though some power supplies can put out three amps at five volts, I'd rather just keep it within the USB spec. But we are definitely charging a lot faster. We're nowhere near nine minutes, we're coming up on six. There's 1.9 volt amps. And there we go. She's dropping off. So she dropped off at 6 minutes. This one goes just slightly higher. 3 thousandths of a millivolt. Three, 3 millivolts higher than the other board. Big deal. So I'm going to call this and say charge in 6 minutes and 15 seconds roughly. So we just saved three minutes by upping the amperage a little bit. The chips definitely got a little hotter, 
but they're still within spec. It's perfectly fine. And you only have to charge this thing once every, what, two days roughly? I think this runs 45 hours. So yeah, you get about two days run for six minutes charge. You can't beat it. So there you go, people. Endless Torch version 2.3. Now with full hardware, no software programming involved whatsoever. And it charges instead of 10 to 12 minutes, 6 minutes and 15 seconds. So it's definitely an improvement. One of these days I might put it on Tindy. I might not. It all depends with all the um, human malware junk going on in 2020. I don't have the income to put money into these right now to, to resell them. So sometime in the future I may put these up for sale. Who knows. But thanks for watching. Finally got it right after the fourth or fifth iteration. Thumbs up, please, if you like this video. Leave any questions or comments down below the video, and I will see you next video.